After working a full week on the Defender, 14 plus hours a day, this new upgrade didn't work until an hour ago. He worked for a full week to install an engine preheater that will act as hot water system. It seems super easy. We have one heater, one thermostat and one exchanger. Heater pumps up the coolant, heats it up and then sends it back in the system. To have everything working properly, everything is connected to the in and out heating system of the car and there's also a one-way valve that is added. The one-way valve is a bit difficult to find, it's a bit special, it has four entries and outs. Second part of the system, the exchanger, it's right there under the passenger seat. So it was a lot of uh, thought into where placing it, was it better to have it outside in the bonnet or inside of the vehicle. Finally, also because there's not much space under the bonnet of our Defender, we decided it would be better to have it inside because also how the exchanger works is that there's the coolant that is heated that goes through the exchanger. There's a wall and behind the wall there's the water that goes through and we thought that if water stayed inside of the exchanger and that it would be placed outside of the car, it might freeze and we might have some problems. We found this place inside of the car to place the exchanger. The last important part of all this system is the thermostat. It's a three-way thermostat and it has two functions so we can have hot water really quickly. He's like measuring it's about three minutes to have hot water. If the temperature of the coolant is under 70 degrees Celsius, the coolant goes only in the exchanger, heater exchanger system. And when it goes above 70 degrees Celsius, so this is the thermostat that does the job, it sends out all the coolant, the hot coolant in the large system in the engine preheater system. The fuel connection for the water heat it was again a lot of research and reread many things. So we have the air heater inside of the build and we already have a connection inside of the fuel tank. So it does everything automatically and we read that it was better to have like one connection in the fuel tank for each heater. And we also read that it was all good to use like a wire connector and just use one hose that is connected inside of the fuel tank. We decided to do it and <laughs> with all the installation that we had because obviously we clearly didn't want to remove the fuel tank and do a second connection inside of it. It would have been like a really painful job and maybe not possible for us to do it on the parking lot in front of our home. We did this connection with the wire connector and everything seems all good. My husband did install a filter for the two heaters, a fuel filter first of all and also so a one-way valve so that the air heater doesn't pump up fuel that supposedly goes for the water heater. Oh, this is again like an advice from Georgian Mayer and Defender. An important feature that we did add on the advice of the Land Cruiser 80 is that we added two security valve opening and closing valves. Like this we can isolate the heater and the exchanger from the rest of the coolant system and if we need to isolate any of them or both of them to work on them, we can cut off the system from the rest of the coolant and we don't need to drain all the coolant from the engine. Choosing the placement of the parts wasn't easy and it was like a real hassle. For example, the thermostat, he had to build, manufacture a bracket for it and find the really perfect place so it wouldn't touch any other part in the engine. The heater also, we chose to put it in the wing, the right wing, because there's some space over there. But in fact, we realized that having the nugget stuff 
air box did help us a lot because he managed to just remove the air box and it was kind of okay to access underneath the wing so that was all good and everything needed to be fixed really properly i mean you cannot just put it there and that it would be moving while driving it would have been dangerous so there you know it was a real hassle to find the space think about everything install also the pump it was a hassle it was a difficult job i do realize that finding the placement of every part is really specific in fact to every build because for example we have this nugget stuff air box and it does take up less space than the stock air box so we did access under the wing how we placed the heater under there might not be possible if you have the stock air box also we chose to put it under there but because we have the catch can that is taking up some space over there and the relay or also for the winch so all this installation is kind of specific to our Land Rover Defender but I do think it might help you and give you some ideas on where and how to place the stuff inside of your build. He's doing an on-the-spot test so he has both heaters going on, testing if everything goes well with the fuel supply. It works well. The air heater is on, the water heater is on, and everything seems to work perfectly. So it means that we can heat up the interior of the car while heating up water or preheating the engine for going out on cold season with the car. So. That's really cool. Regarding the use of the water heater, we have the remote fixed here on the dashboard and we also have two switches, so one for hot water and one for water, on the cubby box. So this will be really easy to use and maybe also easier for the children and us. Just need to switch on with the switch and not use the remote. And this is also an idea from the Land Cruiser AT, so really good advice and idea. Last question, why go for that type of system to have hot water rather than going for a boiler? With the electric system that we have, we could have chosen to go for a boiler, but there are two reasons why we went for that kind of system and not the other one is that the first one there's the boiler it takes up a lot of space so you need to find a solution for that and also when you use the boiler it only heats what's in it and then you use it and then you have to wait to have another batch of water hot water with this system it doesn't take up almost any space inside of our build and you can have hot water until the system system is going and that you have water and as he just tested before you can have hot water really really quickly. So that's the first part of our hot water installation in our overland truck build. Obviously for the moment we don't have any real water system going on. We have the water tanks installation, everything is ready to connect a water pump and a water filtration system, but this is the next step. So that was really an important job. Researching, going for the installation for a full week of work, it was horrible. I think you just can't imagine it, but it was absolutely worth it. And it wasn't working before. Do we know why? He made all this installation during a full week of work, of intense work. And when he finished everything last night, it worked and then it didn't work. And then it worked and then it didn't work. And the reason why is that he realized that there was air in the system. So it was a matter of letting the air go out, adding some coolant. And it was several hours <laughs> of trying to make it work but it was like kind of frustrating last night when he said okay all is done we're gonna try and it didn't work it wasn't working this morning and it's only an hour ago maybe an hour and a half that everything is really working properly now having a hot water system in our new setup is something that we decided two years ago in fact but as we started all the new rebuild like removing everything and starting the self-built 
we didn't have time to really have a look at the hot water system and how we would do it. In fact, it's two years of research because when we decided that this would be a thing in our new setup, my husband did buy a Webasto thermotop. So we had it for two years in our home while researching and asking also uh, some information on our social media, which is a really good point because some of you guys are really helpful. We did get in touch with the Land Cruiser 80, Christophe, thank you very much. He has a similar system in his Land Cruiser 80 that works well. As we knew that he had this system, asked him a lot of questions, even went on a video call with him. And it was really nice seeing that someone did already make and build like an awesome hot water system in his four x four. So we knew it was possible, but it's a Land Cruiser. We have a Defender, so they are some similarities for the water system setup but regarding the space that we have in our bonnet is clearly not the same as his vehicle so we took all his ideas also all the components that he used and it was really helpful you should go and check out his instagram because he did share all his setup and it's a quite cool setup besides from that we also had some help from Entrek. He's building some really cool setups too and he was of a real help in understanding how the Webasto works. In fact, we aren't using the Webasto thermotop that we bought two years ago, but another one that was much better for this hot water system. So Entrek did help us a lot on all the details of understanding how everything should work. And lately we did have a lot of help from George Ma Mare, I'm sorry for the name if I'm not saying it correctly, George Mare and Defender. And they helped us a lot because they had a similar system on a Defender. So they helped us regarding all the coolant connections and all that. So that was like really helpful for building all the system. So what you see today on our Land Rover Defender isn't only just a complete week and hours during this week of work. It's two years of research, taking the time to understand how it could work, how to use all the best components and have all the components that we needed to do the install on our Land Rover Defender. So yeah, if you get any value of this video, please subscribe to the channel. It would be great having you part of this community. Now, comment below and tell me if you have a hot water system in your Overlander. You must understand that this work was a work that my husband clearly didn't want to do and we asked a first garage who could do the work that we trust them for doing that kind of work. They said, okay, yes, but I don't have time now. And then there was delay, delay. And then we asked the second garage, same, we trust them a lot, but they changed the date two times. So as we were going at PSP Expedition Campus for the installation of our cool water tanks, we decided that, well, we, my husband decided that he will do the Webasto engine preheater installation after the installation of these water tanks. At first, we thought that we would be doing this during our October holidays. And because of the weather, when coming back from the Netherlands, it was supposedly going to be a good, nice weather week. It was the case. So he said, I'm moving my week of holidays for now and I'm going to do this job now. Why not doing it like a bit there and there during the weekend after work? It's just not possible for that type of work. You really need to have the time and be on it when you start it. So this is what happened for seven days <laughs> of work, like working crazy hours until the night and even during the night. So yeah, he did a great job. And as said earlier, 
it wasn't working until an hour ago. Obviously, it was the best choice of doing it ourselves because we know now how the system is built and how everything works. So if there's a failure and this can fail <laughs> quite quickly, as we saw after the installation, we know how it's done and how it works. So when out there with the Defender abroad, it will be much easier for us. And sometimes being lazy and just giving it to someone else isn't a good idea. It's often the end result that everybody wants. Obviously it's the same for us but in fact what is the most valuable is all the work that is put in the build. If you have a failure and that the person who built it isn't there with you for helping you you're gonna be in a really bad situation so yeah in fact spending hours and like struggling with this kind of installation is much more valuable for us now and for us on the long term. Why buy a Webasto Thermotop Evo 5 two years ago and not use it? While researching to get all the correct information, we realized one feature that wasn't quite good for us regarding the Webasto Thermotop Evo 5 is that it wouldn't work or wouldn't work properly above 1500 meters of height. Living in Switzerland, having all the Alps and all these mountains, we quite often go above that height. And regarding where we want to travel, 1500 meter isn't really high for us. We did contact Webasto to see if it was possible to add something so it would work above this height. And they simply replied that it wasn't possible and that it should be all good for our region but we don't agree with that so this is the reason why we didn't install the Webasto Thermotop Evo 5. So again a lot of research went into finding a new one. We didn't find any other one at Webasto that would be good for our Land Rover Defender. In fact the Thermotop from Webasto, the Evo 5, we knew already had been installed in some Defenders so the size was quite compact and we needed to find another one that had a similar size. And in fact we found one at Eberspecher and the one that we have is the Eberspecher Hydronic S3. I don't remember the rest. <laughs> Eberspecher Hydronic S3 D5E. It did add some cost for us because we had this engine preheater at home for two years and now we decided to buy another one. It seemed more interesting and in fact more intelligent to directly install a component that would be usable in most situations where we would find ourselves. The Eberspecher is usable on the paper until 3000 meters of height so for us it's much better. There are three main heater sellers companies on the market so we found a Webasto Eberspecher and Autotherm. We do have the Autotherm planner as heater for the interior build when sleeping or out there and it does work well. I know that it's a bit cheaper and our Autotherm is usable until 2500 meters so it was already higher than the Webasto Thermotop we had bought two years ago. It seems a bit weird that Eberspecher and Autotherm are able to build heaters that are usable at a much much higher altitude than the Webasto, but that's only a personal view of the company. There are two types of heater. So we have the air heater, like the autotherm that we have inside of the build to heat when we are inside of the build. <laughs> and there's the coolant heater, like the Eberspecher that my husband just installed. And this heats the coolant and then you can heat some water with an exchange heater and you can also preheat the engine with the coolant going into the hoses and you can also do the electric connection to have it heat the interior of the car through the ventilation. This isn't something that we have done yet because you have to tweak the electronic and electric of the car so the ventilation is usable without the ignition on. If some of you guys did 
do all this on a Land Rover Defender, please comment below and give us some information because this feature is possible and it would be a bit stupid to not use it. And also would love to know if this feature with the thermotop works properly to heat the interior of the Defender through the ventilation rather than having an air top like we have inside of the build to heat the interior of the build. The main reason of installing this Eberspecher is to preheat the engine during the cold season and also have hot water, have the like really cool hot water system. <laughs> This is also why it wasn't an easy job because it wasn't only installing the Eberspecher inside of the bonnet of the Defender and connecting everything to the coolant system. It was a lot of research and thoughts on where placing the exchanger and how to fix everything and make everything work going through the exchanger too. It was a horrible job. The installation, it's gonna be different depending on the car that you have. So we took the diagram of the Land Cruiser 80 for help. So we had it in the big lines and then George, Mere and Defender helped us to understand better the connection that we could do regarding our Land Rover Defender, the TD4, because it would have been different if we had a TD5. You cannot place the exchanger at the same place if you have a TD5 or a TD4 like ours. Just so you understand a bit better, so we have placed the exchanger right after the heater on our di diagram and this is all good for our TD4 but regarding what we understood from George Marian Defender, he explained that if he placed his exchanger on his TD5 like we did, he would lose some hot air for his interior ventilation because it's a bit different. The first idea when talking about installing the exchanger, this was discussed with the last garage. It would have been to have custom made steel hoses going to the exchanger and we thought after that, when we decided to do the installation, that it would be kind of impossible to do it with the hoses that we used. And in fact, the installation went quite well for that part. Hope you enjoyed this video and had a lot of useful information. Let me know in the comments below if you want more details on that setup. Would be really happy to give out any information. And don't forget to like, subscribe and share. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.